Hi guys, welcome to the high square test. So you could be able to explain what the high square test is, calculate the values from high square test and demonstrate how the high square test is used in genetics. So in terms of the spec, we are just here. So let's get started. So what is a high square test then? It's a statistical test that can be used to test the null hypothesis. So then what is the null hypothesis? This is used to examine the results of scientific investigation and based on the assumption that there will be no statistically significant difference between sets of observations, any difference being due to chance alone. Okay, so what are the criteria for the high square test? We need a large sample, so we're talking about sample 20 over. The data must fall into uh, categories because we will be looking at the uh, different categories. Only row counts and not percentages. So we're not using rates, percentages is just the uh, row counts. And it's used to compare, of course, experimental results with the one that we expect. So we've learned about the genetic crosses, we've learned about the ratios and um, and we can use high square test to see if the real results are following the expectations. So how can we work out the high square test? We need the uh, number of the observed values. We need the number of the expected values. So the equation would be number of observed minus expected squared root and then uh, divided by the expected numbers. So what we will be then comparing this to, we will be comparing the values, the high square value with the P level. So 5% is the smallest value accepted by statisticians for the results to being due to chance. So if you are in this range here, okay, up to including 5%, any of the results, difference in the results will be due to chance, but if the results are lower than 5%, so if you are aiming in this side, then the results will be due to uh, other factors than a chance. So, okay. How can we then use it? So let's imagine you toss uh, the coin and you've got 45 tails, 45 heads. So you're putting this in the next table to work out uh, to uh, to work out the uh, expected values, okay? And observe. So actually, in terms of the heads, we've got 55 here. And we've got 45 tails, okay? Expected, of course, what would be expected would be 50-50, okay? So then we're using the formula to work out each of those categories. So as we can see, we've put this data into categories as the uh, assumption state. We need categories and we're using this equation to work out for each of the categories. So to work out our high square value, it's the sum of those uh, answers. Okay, so this is our high square equals one. What do we do then with this high square? Of course, we've calculated high square. We know it's one, so this is our high square. We now need to work out the degree of freedom. What is the degree of freedom? It's a number of the categories. So we've got one, two of them, take away one. So the formula is number of categories minus one. So in our example, it's one. And now we need to look up at the p-value at our table. So how can we then do it? So we still got our answer for the high square test here, so we don't forget. So with this table, we know that the critical value is a p-value, which corresponds to 5%. OK, we, of course, don't need to look through all this table because it's complicated as it is. What do we need to do? We need to work out the degree of freedom. Firstly, we work it out before it's one. 
So we are not interested in anything, okay, in that table. We are only looking at this rock here for the degree of freedom one. So the critical value, so the p-value that we are looking and we're going to compare uh, our high square width is 3.84. Okay, so 3.84. Where is then our high square? Our high square lies somewhere here because it equals 1. Okay, so what we can conclude from here is the fact that this is 5% and our uh, high square test uh, come up as here between 50 and 25%. So that means that we can accept the null hypothesis and any difference, okay, is due to chance alone. So as we can see in terms of the percentage, okay, it's above 5%. But in terms of the numbers, in terms of the values, high square test okay it's lower than the value that corresponds to the uh, p value so uh, we did our steps okay and uh, let's have a look at the write up so remember the v percentage okay five percent it's the smallest we're going to accept for, uh, for the null hypothesis okay so there is not significant difference so up to there, up to the star, we are including everything for this right up. So if calculated high square value is less or equal than the uh, critical value, so less or equal, so remember that's the value that we're talking about here, so as the numbers, okay, then we accept. But then if there will be, of course, more as the percentage, same rule applies. So there is no significant difference and we will accept the null hypothesis. But if the critical value now, so as the number, not percentage, is higher than the critical value that corresponds to this 5%, we will be on this side now, we of course going to reject our null hypothesis because the probability is less than 5% that results are due to chance. Okay, so that's the right up. Remember, percentage 5% is the smallest. So anything above 5%, okay, that way we are accepting null hypothesis in probability is higher than 5% that results are due to chance. If the percentage, because normally on the past paper questions, you will see not 0.01 or not 0.001. You are below, okay, this 5%, which is the smallest value we can accept. Then the probability is less than 5% that the results are due to chance. So they are due to all the factors than the chance. Right, so that's everything for the high square test. See you later.